Hey YouTube, Peter Bill Knife Guy. Today we're going to be talking about edge geometry and more specific crappy knife steel edge geometry and if one does better than the other. Let's find out. 10 degree, much more damage than your one that had a steeper angle. So like I said, uh, on YouTube I hear a lot of people talk about edge geometry. They say some, some people say, and you know what, it might be true, but I don't know. Some people say that edge geometry is more important than the steel, uh, or just as important as the steel sometimes. Now, they say sometimes you could take a crappy steel with good edge geometry and get better cutting performance out of it by edge retention than a good steel with crappy edge geometry. And, you know, it may be true, but it sounds fishy to me, and the only way to test it is to test it, you know? I'm not one for taking other people's words on shit. So, you know, if it seems fishy to me, might as well try it myself. First off, we have two different butter knives of unknown origins, and I know they're not identical. You know, murder me in the comments, whatever. But they're both butter knives. They both probably have shitty ass, really high stainless steel that doesn't hold an edge very well. One of them is sharpened to a 10 degree, 20 inclusive, and one is sharpened to a 25 degree, 50 inclusive. So they're both mirror polished. They're both extremely sharp. And I want to see how long until they lose their push cut ability with the steep angle versus the shallow angle. And also maybe depending on how long this takes, we'll take it to complete failure and how far they will not, or how long until they won't actually cut uh, uh, paper at all now you can see on these here how laid back the angle is on this guy versus this guy it's a much much steeper angle both these go to zero there is no secondaries on there you know this is the main bevel here's your cutting bevel there's no micro bevels or anything just straight down to zero and yeah let's get this started we're going to be using our usual three quarter inch climbing rope and uh our usual use printer paper with crap on the back of it. Now, let's just do one at a knife at a time. Now, let's start off with the 25 degree. And, you know, we'll do, I'll say three cuts at a time because I don't know how long this is gonna go. Excuse my dirty hands. Um, and then check. So, what else to do other than go for it? I'm gonna try to use the same part of the knife, but the paper test will tell. So, one, two, three. Still pretty sharp. One, two, three. And I'm purposely sawing back and forth because I want to wear this edge out. I'm not trying to be here all day. Somebody made a comment, you know, I should just push cut, but if you don't like it, do your own tests. So it will no longer push, eh, it'll kind of push cut after six cuts. But let's see, let's do a long slice. Yeah, it's getting awfully crunchy right there. But still kind of sharp. Let's go three more. You can feel the sharpness leave this knife, too. That's nine total. It will no longer push cut at all. Let's just take it to when it don't really want to slice paper. Nine. Twelve cuts. Say twelve cuts killed it. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah just wants to stop right right in here so 12 cuts with a 25 degree angle so it will no longer reliably push cut or slice paper now let's go to the steep guy Wow, <laughs> that cuts so much nicer. Still push cutting. Still push cutting. Still push cutting. Still push cutting. Not really, actually. It don't want to push cut, but it'll still plenty slice. Plenty slicey. So we're at nine, and over here we did. Well, over here, we're at nine, and this thing's still kicking ass. Let's do, uh, let's do three more. Twelve. Still has an edge on it. Three more. Three more. Three more. Wow, that's still cutting good. Way better than this one after 12 cuts. It's just gotta... Still wants to try. Hmm, let's do three more cuts with this guy. Let's see what happens. 
Oh, it's getting hard. Wow. So much easier to cut with that guy. Hmm. So, 25 degree. Very hit and miss, actually. Hmm. There's no obvious difference. I would still say this guy's twice as sharp. So, so where does that leave us? <clears throat> that leaves us with, you know, what they say is correct. Edge geometry matters, even on a crappy knife steel and can make a crappy knife steel perform better with a better edge geometry. But there's a caveat and nobody talks about this. The caveat is which one of these edges would you want on a larger knife that you're gonna take out outdoors and chop with? You're gonna want this, not this. So everything in the knife world is a balance of something. You know, a big chopper is not gonna be a good EDC. A small knife's not gonna be a big chopper. A really good edge retention steel is not gonna be strong. A really soft steel that's strong is not gonna have good edge retention. It's all a give and take. So. In this specific test, edge geometry matters. But in the real world, edge geometry matters also too with depending on what you're doing with the knives. Now, if you're just sitting at home and cutting paper, yeah, throw a real steep angle on that thing. If you're gonna actually use your knife day to day, probably gonna wanna use this because these two, this one will destroy itself as soon as you hit something hard. Uh, here, let's, let's do something. At the back of an old knife here. Let's do one whack with each and see the damage. Okay. Here's your steeper angle. Or sorry, this is your uh, 10 degree. Much more damage than your one that had a steeper angle. So, like I said, it's all a give and take. Nothing's perfect. You need to tailor it to your uses and your knife steels. And there is no blanket statement that covers it all. But anyways, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching.